Model aviation has been both an enjoyable and educational activity for much of my life. Two ways it has helped me is demonstrating my thinking was incorrect or inaccurate and learning the process of refinement. Often, I thought small changes in trim, propellers, or rubber motors would not make much of a difference, but I was proven wrong. It is my hope that this video can be used to promote the virtues of model aviation as a fun and educational activity for young people. The first rubber-powered model plane can be credited to the French aviation enthusiast Alfonso Peynau. Initially, he experimented with rubber-powered model helicopters, but later turned to building model planes powered by rubber. The Wright brothers were first exposed to flight by the toy helicopter their father gave them based on the helicopter developed by Peynau. The first model airplane club started in the New York City area as early as 1907. Balsa wood was not used in model planes until around 1911, so models were constructed of materials such as bamboo, pine, and spruce. Most models were twin pushers, two motor sticks with a prop in the rear of each, coming together in front. Viewed from the top, it looked like a capital letter A. The propellers turned in opposing directions to cancel the effects of torque. In the 1930s, even city government promoted model aviation by sponsoring contests and clubs. Detroit Department of Recreation sponsored 22 clubs and even sold modeling supplies. School gyms were open one night a week for indoor flying. Charles Lindbergh's historic flight from New York to Paris in 1927 was the driving force to skyrocket the popularity of aero modeling. Before Lindbergh's flight, only around a dozen model airplane kit manufacturers existed, and within a year of the flight, there were over 2,000. Today, the largest number of young people are exposed to free flight model airplanes by an event that is part of a science competition held in many middle and high schools known as Science Olympiad. The model airplane event is known as the Right Stuff. Planes must be built according to specifications that limit the size and minimum weight of the airplane. Competitions are held at regional and national levels, with the top times equaling what a very skillful indoor modeler might accomplish. In 2002, three students who had started flying Right Stuff models progressed to the most delicate and demanding of indoor model airplanes, the F-1D. They would win for the U.S. team as the junior USA team flying in the F-1D Indoor World Championships in Romania in 2002. The essentials for building your model airplane would be razor blades or a modeling knife, pins, and glue. You'll need a building surface that you can push the pins in to hold the balsa down. Ceiling tile or cardboard works good for this. Normally the plans are covered with wax paper, but some planes use the plan as a covering material. It's also helpful to have a sanding block. Glue stick is used to attach the covering material to the balsa framework. It's good to have everything organized in containers, especially for group building projects. <laughs> Essential to getting flight times of more than a few seconds is a mechanical winder. The rubber motor is stretched and lubricated and turns are wound in as the winder is brought closer to the other end of the loop. Common ratios for winders are 15 to 1, 10 to 1, and 5 to 1. Most beginner rubber-powered airplanes can be flown indoors and outdoors in light winds. 
Dedicated indoor airplanes such as the Wright Stuff and F1D models can only be flown indoors. Designing and building a model airplane is rather easy to do with some understanding of aerodynamics and using rule of thumb proportions anyone can design a successful model. There are many more unusual types of aircraft that can provide additional challenges such as flying wings or canards, tail first aircraft that is. Students design these airplanes some of them flew very well and some not so good but it was an educational experience for all the students with a design like the Denny dart where the wing is removable it's easy to try different wings building and adjusting the model accurately can make a huge difference in the performance as you build additional models you will want to improve the accuracy of your work for aesthetic reasons also. Hopefully the desire to do more accurate work will transfer into all areas of your life.